Welcome to this edition of Thought to Action, presented by the Herb London Center for Policy Research. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, President of the Center, and uh, we'll be going through some key issues today regarding Afghanistan, China, and related issues. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to hit that like button. Please share and subscribe. If you enjoy uh, all the things we do in our uh, segments, please join our Patreon, Patreon community, at Patreon Thought to Action. Uh, dot com. As a subscriber, you will have access to Ask Us Anything sessions, or you can ask us anything about current policy. It usually gets very, very interesting with some of the discussions we have. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and our website, londoncenter.org. So without further ado, one of my favorite people in Congress, uh, one of the, the most um, dynamic leaders who's willing to say the truth and back it up with action, uh, Congressman Andy Biggs, who is the chairman of the Freedom Caucus. Uh, Andy, welcome to Thought to Action. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Tony, thanks for having me. Thanks for what you guys do. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And uh, one of the notable things is that uh, you and the caucus, uh, and full disclosure, uh, I used to work with the late Walter Jones, God rest his soul. Walter and I were, were very close friends. Walter was another man who chose to speak the truth and defend the truth vigorously. And I see uh, you've picked up that mantle very well and I appreciate everything you do. And I think that's why we're here today. Uh, very few people are willing to speak the truth regarding the realities of Afghanistan. Any other president I know, no matter what the party was, would have essentially been at least called in uh, for his bad decision-making. Uh, in the recent hearings, which I have every confidence was accurate, uh, Mark Milley, the current chairman of the Joint Chiefs, admitted that he'd given advice to, to President Biden that he didn't take. Uh, Secretary Austin uh, basically demurred across the board in full disclosure. I, I worked for Brigadier General Lloyd Austin. He was uh, our, the commanding officer of Task Force 180 in Afghanistan back when I was there for my first tour. So when you examine just the facts, uh, where, where do we go from here regarding holding Joe Biden accountable Andy, regarding the, the Afghan debacle? So that's a, that's a great question. We've been trying to find the avenues to, to push accountability. I mean, that's really what the American people, I think, deserve and want. And so we're not getting a lot of cooperation from his subordinates. Although, I mean, they, they told us last week, as you said, that, that they gave advice. He disregarded that advice. But I mean, he... President Biden has lied to the American people, but more than that, he was basically in the face of a, 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 an oddity, a, you know, circumstances. He was telling the Afghan uh, 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 president at the time, Ghani, to lie to the world as well. And, and that really changed the context of the discussion of what was ostensibly going to happen. So if we're going to hold Biden uh, accountable, we can't get him to come on down to Congress because Democrats aren't going to ever bring him down. Right. And he won't, he doesn't have to come if the, if the, you know, if we ask him to come, he doesn't have to come anyway. There's really only one way to hold him accountable and get him to answer questions. In my opinion, that is to go through to an impeachment setting. And um, so that's why uh, I've signed on to impeachment. I, I, you know, the freedom caucus is, has requested our leadership pursue this because we, maybe the idea would be two things. If if we actually got some some gas behind a, an effort to impeach, even though the Democrats control, what I think might happen is that it would cause Biden to have to come forward and be more forthcoming with his answers to questions that that everybody wants wants to find out the answers to. A lot of us support that. And uh, Andy, frankly, I think uh, the myriad of issues from the economy to uh, the outright use of DOJ as a political bludgeon against his enemies, these things are all impeachable. And to me, uh, there's going to be a point of, of, of uh, brissance, if you will, where I think even some Democrats are going to have to cross over and recognize that the very values that we have as Americans are being jeopardized by what I can only describe as fascist-like behavior. It's ironic. 
Now, let me do a little editorial statement. It's ironic that all the things they accused President Trump of doing, which he didn't, <laughs> Joe Biden is actually engaged in. Uh, and I, I, I find it ironic and dangerous. And this leads me to the next question. Uh, one of the impeachments was uh, based on what I believe was the false uh, testimony of a whistleblower named Alexander Vindman. Yes. Uh, Vindman, in my judgment, and I am a whistleblower. I've been down that path. I've testified. Uh, I was uh, held to a very high standard, still attacked for it by, by both political sides, I, I might add. Uh, but I would do it again. And I, my belief was it was my duty as a sworn officer to tell the truth. Vindman did no such thing. In many ways, he embellished or changed the truth. But as the only consequence, he was forced to retire. At least that's what my sources tell me in Army. Now we have another officer who chose to tell the truth, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stu Schiller. Stu, uh, Stu Schiller, uh, after witnessing firsthand a series of leadership failures, catastrophic failures, which resulted in the death of Marines. And as we just talked about, a, a wholesale uh, debacle in Afghanistan. Uh, Andy, how, what do you make of this dual standard, this double standard of the, the Vindman uh, embracing, uh, by, but not only by uh, uh, members of Congress, but I mean, the army itself seemed to embrace uh, his illegal actions. Uh, and now we have a Marine simply trying to tell the truth who spent time in the brig and still is in danger of being of being uh, uh, court-martialed for just telling the truth. Yeah, I, I think it's appalling that we've reached that point in this country. I, I mean, if, if the Vindman uh, v. Scheller type of situation were you, unique and only one, you might say, well, this is a one-off and, and there's just a problem here. We got to make a, a minor adjustment. But what I'm saying is, this happens all over our society today, right. where uh, and 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 this is no exception. I mean, Vindman actually violated, in my opinion, he violated the law. He did, uh, and he exceeded the the scope of being a whistleblower because it looked like he was fabricating evidence. Number one and number two, um, he had no authority to 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 basically declassify what otherwise would be a classified uh, a conversation. So, I mean, those, those types of things become a problem. But then you look at the Scheller case, and here's a guy who basically, I mean, as you said, he just he did a video. He says, I, you know, I know I'm going to have to resign. I'm going to have to sever my ties with the service. But this is what I saw. I mean, that's, that's a classic case of a, of a whistleblower right. saying, Look, you know, I'm willing to, I have to, I have to leave. I know I have to leave. I can't con with good conscience remain here but I have to speak the truth. And um, I, I just, I just think what's happened to him is just unjust. Uh, and, and um, so we were advocating that, he, you know, bare minimum, you got to let the guy out of the brig. I mean, that's the first step. And then the second thing is you really ought to let him resign and sever from the service um, because we've had people come in from the service and actually mislead, misdirect, and in some cases actually lie to Congress with no consequences whatsoever. Right. And so, so this is really unfortunate here. So to that point, I think there needs to be a reckoning uh, of the Afghan issue, not just uh, the debacle of the summer, but how Congress was lied to for, my estimation, 18 years. I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Walter Jones and I worked on a track two with Pakistan. We actually sent Tony Zinni General Zinni over to do an assessment of Afghanistan uh, eight, 10 years ago. And uh, Zinni found the truth of what was going on. And by the way, this was bipartisan. Uh, Jim McGovern and Walter both asked, you know, I was part of this. I was uh, in, involved in this directly. Uh, Zinni did an independent assessment, which basically was blown off by everybody because no one wanted to hear Andy, that Afghanistan, this rosy picture that the Pentagon and State Department constantly was, was painting, wasn't true. So I think we have to look deeper. Schiller is simply the last straw, which I think uh, is the ultimate expression of failure. But this, this failure was long in the making because of uh, a lot of folks in multiple bureaucracies lying to Congress. And frankly, not you, but I know others 
who were willing to take those lies and pretend they didn't know. And I sat in hearings where, where I watched senior officers lying, flat out lying to members of Congress. And this, this, is, this is no way to run an oversight system. Uh, we all are responsible for telling the truth. And uh, there seems to be an objective war on truth today. And if that truth uh, goes counter to the popular narrative of whoever's in charge, and I, I say both parties have been guilty of this, it seems to be that you become the issue and they try to go after you. Stu is simply uh, uh, someone who tried to tell the truth and, and is being squished right now. So with that said, I think I'd like to ask you back, Andy, so we can talk more about that eventually. Yeah. But let's talk about the ultimate, what happens now in Afghanistan. And, and I think some of this goes back to China. Uh, one of the rumors I'm hearing a pretty strong, uh, and there's pretty strong evidence to back it up, China may well start uh, using Bagram Air Base, a base that we spent over a billion dollars rebuilding. Uh, and China seems to be acting very aggressively in other spheres. Could, could China be reacting, uh, Andy, to what they perceive as Joe Biden's inability to make decisions or do things to actually defend the equities of the United States or our, our allies? Well, Tony, you said that so diplomatically. I'll just tell you, I, <laughs> the answers are hard. Yes. I mean, look, um, Joe Biden is weak. He's he's actually gone back to the what I would say is the Obama era leftist uh, kind of a not even a neoliberal institutional kind of uh, uh, strategy uh, in international relations. I think it's this this uh, uh, far more acquiescent to the the. Uh, demands of the international system than a realist point of view. And I tend to be kind of a realist guy who says, well, we got to balance power and protect and project power and make sure that our interests, national security interests are protected without being warmongers everywhere. I mean, I mean, that's really the, the bottom line. But but when I look at it, so so you're you're hearing the same rumors that I'm hearing um, uh, that China is really basically initiated control over Bagram. The, what's why Afghanistan is important to China is it's rich in, in critical minerals and they're going to uh, ac access all those critical minerals. Unfortunately, the uh, the Afghan people, um, tribal in nature yet um, uh, feudal, if I can put it that way, uh, failed to exploit those minerals like they should have and could have and, and actually built an economy for those people. But that's just that was Afghanistan. That is Afghanistan. Right. But China is also exerting pressure and, and power around the world, whether it's a building uh, uh, a highway in Guatemala with their Belt and Road uh, and, and going all over the world. They're in they're all over Africa in the same way. And then and then you look at you and I were talking about this uh, before we came on today. It, uh, the number of sorties that they're sending over Taiwan now into right. Taiwan Taiwanese airspace. That doesn't happen with a Donald Trump and a, a very strong America first policy because President Trump used all leverage points as, uh, to try to, to rein China in. And China's an expansionist. They're a, 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 uh, um, they want to be, they, they view themselves, I mean, the central kingdom, this is a hegemonic play. Uh, they want to be the, 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 the big, the big, uh, a, a you know per strong person in the world, and they want to overtake the U.S. They they projected by 2049. That's where they wanted to be because that's the 100 year anniversary of, of uh, the Chinese ascension. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If we don't, as Americans, uh, respond at least internally and domestically, and and uh, iterate our national security interests more clearly, they're going to get there because they're. Uh, they, they steal our technology, as you know, but I, I just am really concerned about Taiwan, which is part of that balancing that we see going on in uh, Northeast Asia. And it, it may be gone. It may be gone. So, yeah, look, there's a lot to talk about uh, next time. I'd like to invite you back because of some issues that uh, I think the audience would like to hear from you, especially because of the, the great work you and the caucus does. But more importantly, uh, Andy, uh, God bless you and, and your constant pursuit of the truth, which, uh, as I found out a long time ago, truth is not a popular uh, issue to maintain in D.C. So thanks. You Andy. did. You found it out, Tony. Thanks for thanks for uh, walking that plank and 
dangling your legs over the, the shark infested water for us all. Yes, sir. So, and thank you all for joining us for this edition of Thought to Action presented by the Herb London Center for Policy Research. Please remember to, to like, share, subscribe. Uh, be sure and check out our Patreon. Patreon uh, is the best way to get early access and join us for our Ask Us Anything sessions. Please join us on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and obviously through our site, londoncenter.org. So uh, again, Tony Schaefer signing off for uh, Thought to Action. Thanks for joining us. 